rolling and continue our discussions surrounding the nationwide protests that have rocked the country and implications of some actions taken by members of the society in certain parts of the country. We are now being joined by Barrister Dikrola Ajala or Larry Noye, who is a legal practitioner as well as an associate at the Sabic Legal Practitioners. Alongside uh, Barrister Stanley Madwabuchi uh, Ofwebu, a private legal practitioner as well, and a human rights lawyer. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Now, now, it's nice to have legal perspective into the occurrences of the past nine days with the hashtag end bad governance protests taking different twists and turns in different parts of the country, but particularly most alarming is what many consider a treasonable offense in terms of the hoisting of Russian flags during the protest as recorded in certain states. Now we hear that arrests have also been made, seven Polish nationals who are reportedly students have been arrested and many are trying to find the balance in what informed the arrest, the relationship between Poland and Russia and uh, let's start with you Barrister. This is one of those questionable times in the country when persons say who are the sponsors and what do they stand to benefit by inviting Russia into a sovereign country like Nigeria? Yeah. Well, first of all, a time like this, you, 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 you discover that um, the government is just trying to, to, to be on the safe side, on the safer side, and um, the, protest, uh, the protest has a whole lot of... Um, a whole lot of uh, mixed feelings attached to it and then the you see some set of uh, um, youth um, carrying uh, a, a purported flag that looked like um, the russian flag but before then you agree with me that uh, if if you if you take a, a holistic look of the of the of the emblem or the flag of the nigerian army you you agree with me that the flag of the nigerian army also have the white, um, the blue, and, and the, the red. red. So that raises a question as to whether the flag that we are seeing are actually a, 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 an emblem of the Russian or that of the Nigerian army. Because there were some calls for the army as well to be invited into exactly, the Exactly, exactly. And then that raises a concern as to whether this flag are actually the flag of the Nigerian, of, 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 of the Russian. Because I'm... Um, if you look at uh, some of the, the, the songs that we are chanting, some of them that speak out that, that we are from the north, from the north, we are chanting some of the songs of the Nigerian, like the, I can't sing it very well, but then. The Nigerian the, army. The, the, yes, the so something like that. They were inviting the Nigerian army. Then, if you now bring it home, looking at what the law is and looking at the circumstance at which the purported flag was hosted. But personally, I do not agree that the flag was actually hosted. There's a difference between carrying and hoisting a, 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 carrying a material or a cloth that look like a flag and hoisting. Hosting of a flag is totally it's different like a, from a carrying. Yes. So hosting is a different thing and carrying is a different thing. It's just unfortunate that the both of them are mixed up. So it would be, it would be wrong to assume or to say that the certain certain member of the youth or of the, of the country hosted that flag a, a flag well well, well barista th th these are quite uh, strong um, you know assertions made by your colleague here however uh, following the incident of um, you know the flag being raised by protesters in parts of Kano's area and the rest uh, uh, the russian embassy okay. released a statement okay. you know denying being involved in any way whatsoever with you know the people who raised these flags that is one if these were not russian flags as um, you have pointed out i don't think the embassy would have come out to make such a statement and wash its hands off what do you think well thank you mr Chijuk. Chijuk. Okay. you see my nene friend is um i understand he's a human rights activist but um, the reality is to the fact that it is a Russian flag. And, uh, you know, initially, I would have also presumed that the flag they were wavering was that one behind Mr. President. You know, there's always two flags behind Mr. President. The, the flag of the armed forces. The flag of the armed forces. Yes. Which represents 
the GCFR, which means the commander in chief of the armed forces. Yes. But the reason why I would not bend to his assumption is to the fact that um, they were calling the name of the president of Russia. Who would have said that is also a mistake? Big question. That would not have been a mistake. Because if you look at the the number of people protesting and flying this flag, they look like somebody who is not educated. You see, I would not want to go to the level of their education because what we call education on our own part is when you are able to speak English or you are able to write English. Education is beyond that. I might be nailed in English language, they are nenen in Hausa language, in Arabic language. So, they are not illiterate, like we used to portray them. You understand? So, the, the what they did, by provision of our law, is construed to be treasonable fellow. Well, thank you very much for establishing this background to the conversation, gentlemen. We also have a third opinion, and as barrister Inia Chibong joins us to also share his thoughts on the legal implication and the security risks of what is now considered a treasonable felony. By Sachibong, good morning to you and thanks for joining me on the show. Good morning. Uh, All right, very quickly, let's have your perspective on this development from the angle of the legal implications and the security concerns at hand. Okay, so um, now this, uh, the, the these issues are constitutional, um, and, um, and, and and there has to be some kind of balancing act, you know, because while the constitution gives the right to freedom of speech, to freedom of association, um, they all, they all have their limits. They do have their limits. Um, of course, we are entitled. To say something about the way we are governed, but we are not allowed to go overboard. I do think that um, waving the flag of another country shows this loyalty of um, of a serious form. Um, it, it's okay. This is a Nigerian thing. We are protesting against the conditions that we are feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. We are asking for better governance, we are asking for um, our leadership to do the right thing. But when you insinuate and bring in the government of a foreign country into the picture, what you are saying, especially in regard to the events that have happened in the past one year or so in neighboring countries, um, is, is not salutary, it's not, it's not good. But what it means is that you're directly saying just the way you supported those other countries to overthrow their governments in take power, that's what we want you to come do here in Nigeria. Um, but and having said that, we need to know whether these people were doing it in, in, in their stupidity or whether it is part of a deliberate plan now, Barista Achibong, it's very similar to what uh, Barista Jala has said in distinguishing if it's naivety or it's been sponsored. But in terms of the number of persons involved in this act, what can the law do? Is it a mass arrest or is it a tracing of the sponsorship? Well, well I, I think that um, you have to imagine that if people have up to 100 acts, someone must have created them. And you know, and they giving it to them. Um, but you see, in our country, you have to also ask the question: How did we get here? How did we get to the point where your own citizens are pouring into the streets and are, uh, you know, uh, saying this kind of thing? You know, the the the, the act of treason, you know, as defined by the Nigerian Criminal Code Act consists of any person who levies war against the state in order to intimidate or overawe the president or the governor of the state. 
and, and that, the last section, section seven, uh, chapter 77, says that the person is guilty of treason and is liable to the punishment of death. The question is, by doing what the flag-waving um, persons are doing, are they trying to intimidate or overawe the president or a governor? I think what they're doing is showing their dissatisfaction, simply showing their dissatisfaction with this state of affairs and the way in which uh, they're being governed. Well, well Barrister, and, actually, and in, in, in recent times, following the um, you know these developments about raising of the Russian flag and calls being made by the protesters to the president of Russia to help them in court and come to their rescue. Uh, organizations like the Afenifere have made calls to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, Bola, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's led administration to, you know, publicly name the sponsors of this very treasonable act uh, publicly, while others share a line of thought that uh, the raising of the flag is not perhaps a treasonable felony because in places like churches, in hotels, in, in you know, mosques, Flags can be hoisted at at um, at you know different occasions. So my my question now is: Is this a particularly different situation, and why is it being treated uh, with such severity? Um, I don't know the severity with which it is being treated because I I, I am believing that Bruno may have been arrested in connection with that action. Are going to be tried in the federal high court, which has exclusive original jurisdiction in such matters. And so, once you try someone in a fair manner, that is good. That's all that the the constitution and the law requires of the state. That when you accuse somebody of an offence, you give them a fair trial, and that's what I expect to be done. And if in the course of that trial it is found that these people are part of an, a true rebellion against the state of Nigeria or a particular um, state in the Federation, then they might as well be found guilty and put away. But if it is found that these were jolly good fellows who uh, somehow stumbled on the idea of a flag and then they ran through uh, the streets and shouting, you know, and they, they had no deliberate plan or intention to overawe either the federal or the state government, then by all means, you set them free because when you measure what they have done unless you find a, an intent to overawe or overthrow the government then the, their right to freedom of speech will override what they did and so they, they, they should be found innocent now thank so you barrister Archibald, as you've looked to set a premise for more arguments that would be had especially now that you're talking about the, the federal high court coming into a certain if what they did is tantamount to treason or a call for a change of government forcefully. Uh, let's come back to the studios now as we have more legal perspective. Uh, Barista Ajala, it's on the premise of some of the sensitive points and quite rightly so, Barista Ine has raised because it will still fall with the law to be able to adjudge if these individuals who are more than 50 to 100 yeah. Or is it going to be vested only on the sponsors, like we see the person who was said to be sowing those flags was arrested? You see, um, like he has said, federal High court has jurisdiction. And before you can punish somebody for an offense, there are basic things that need to be established. The number one is, is this offense written in law and its punishment prescribed by the law? That's the first thing. The second thing is that was there a mens rea, that is, was there an intention for treason? The prosecution must, must establish that. Then, was there had to serious? That is, do they, what they think, what they imagine, did they carry it out? Of course, we see that it has been carried out. Yes. And that is why we see it, they were waving it all around. Now, after the prosecution has been able to establish all of this, then they will, they, judgment will be passed on them and they will be faced with this uh, uh, the consequence in accordance with the provision of the law like he has mentioned he mentioned section 37 section 38 of our of our criminal code but because it's happening in the north penal code will be applicable 
section 410 section 411 will be applicable now your question is to the father that i did want to be punished or the sponsor the law is clear you see when it the it is established that they were on on an influence on on due influence the law must might be might take a very light perspective to. perspective to it you understand and people who sponsor them will face the law you understand that is if they can they can establish it in defense that we were we were we were we were, we were, we were what was it called there was there was an influence or deal influence or if you don't do this we are going to do this to you yes then some sort of threat some sort of threat on, on, on influence no matter how it might come it might come in different form you understand yes. so the law has a provision for that. Barrister Stanley, let's examine other incidences because yeah. social media was a gog with several reactions and people were beginning to look at it from the angle of ethnicity and tribal differences. Right. Many cited famous Nollywood actor Chimwetalago who was draped in a Biafra attire and how he was treated. Many are saying that uh, there's some leniency in the way this matter has been approached and earlier on in your comments, your learned colleague was saying, okay, he can understand the human rights angle to which you approach the subject. Now, is this a question of human rights or is this leniency biased in the opinion of many social media users who cite in Chiwetalago and how the agitation in the Southeast has been perceived to the difference in which it's being meted out in the North? Well, all this thing still boils down to what, no matter your, your personal belief, your sentiment, your ideology or whatever it is, it still boils down to what the law says about it. What does the law say? Now, section 111 of the penal code talks about uh, uh, criminalizes carrying of flag or colors that represent, in quotes, the flag of a foreign country. Now, under section 2, sub 3 and 4 of the Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Act of Nigeria 2022. Particularly section 3, I think, captures this particular scenario. Under, the, under section 2, there is a whole lot of acts that were listed to amount to act of terrorism. And a holistic reading of that provision, there is no place where it is specifically mentioned that the sewing or the carrying of or the wearing or the, the wearing in the case of children exactly or the wearing because talking about wearing wearing fashion is a thing of of choice but he was beaten by members of the army that is the problem we are having we, uh, talking about uh, 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 wearing is a thing of choice so that particular act provides a whole lot of act or scenario that constitute act of terrorism and wearing carrying of of a flag or an emblem that purport to be the, 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 the signal of another country was not listed. And then section th so section um, section 4 of it specifically said, even if there is any way you want to construe all that thing that has been mentioned to constitute an act of terrorism, assuming you want to constitute them to be act of terrorism and then you want to bring in the wearing of the, the wearing or the kind of, of flag, as far as it was done during a protest mm. or a demonstration, it will not constitute an act of terrorism mm. unless it comes under subsection 3, paragraph B, C, D, E, F, G. And those paragraphs talk about where there is threat to life, destruction of government property facilities, change of constitutional or economic uh, structure of government. Then, the question now is, the carrying of, of, of this purported flag, did, did, did they amount to threat to life? Some persons were... Of, the of government England. property, alteration of, uh, of the economy. If the answer is in the negative, then it cannot amount to what? But, to but, an but act of in, in, this, in this situation, the, yes. these things that you listed were all parts of the occurrences that we saw happening during the protest, especially in yes. the northern part of the country. Yes. Lives were lost. Government properties were looted, properties and infrastructure were looted, 
private institutions were invaded and looted as well. And in one of the videos, which we don't have now, but one of the videos I watched online of a man, a young man, holding the Russian flag, and he spoke in Hausa. I understand Hausa very well. Yeah. And he said he was calling on the president of Russia, President Vladimir Putin, to come to their aid. Firstly, before he even made those calls, he had threatened the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria with a lot of, you know, you know names I can't mention here. Yes. But he said a lot of things that were very, very unruly before making a call to the president of Russia to come to their help or their aid because the Nigerian government is in court killing them. How would you defend this? That is what I'm saying. If the destruction, the mass destruction or the threat to life, the vandalization and the rest of it, if those threats were perpetrated by the same person that we are carrying the flag, right. that is where you can comfortably charge them for what? Terrorism. But then there have to be a line between those carrying the purported flag that did involved. this, yeah, those involved, and those carrying the purported flag who never destroyed or threatened anyone. Because I don't believe that every one of them that carried that flag or purported to carry that flag actually were involved in the looting, the destruction, the intimidation, and the threat to life and others. As long as all of them were out on the street, how can you distinguish between those who had the flag and, you know, caused mayhem and havoc and those who just used the flag for a procession? That is why we have the police, the army to do their work. Now I'm coming to crime. You don't, you 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 don't, you don't, um, you don't uh, generalize crime. Crime is based on individual. Even though we would have conspiracy and rest of them, you don't generalize crime. You don't say because Mr. E was seen with a flag and then Mr. B was seen with a flag and he has destroyed the lives of other persons. Therefore, Mr. E and E and B should be joined together. He don't do that. Now, while we understand the ambits and workings of the law in provisions with our constitution as amended in 1999. There's also the appropriate measures, much like he has said, law enforcement can take or even the government of the day can take. Now, before the president came out to make an address, which many would say was very instrumental in bringing down the tension, many have said that the government could have taken more appropriate measures or even the security forces who continue to cry about being overnumbered. Uh, what are some of these measures in your perspective in keeping with the law that the Nigerian state can take for its sovereignty and territorial integrity? All right. Thank you very much. You see, in my own perspective, that protest shouldn't have happened in the first place. And um, how we blame some of our orientation agencies, particularly the Minister of Information. You see, we are had here when the youth are exposed to information. Why are we here? What is the president doing? We should know this policy. Why was this policy made? Between the last, the, between one year and now, what are the policies in place? Because honestly speaking, President Tinubu, he's doing his best. I'm not um, a government officer. You know. I'm not. I'm not. But I am saying that if the ministers had doing their job, and the minister information are exposing us to what is happening and what is doing, where we are going, where they met the government, the the, the, the government of Nigeria, where we are now, and when we are going. These are the duty of our orientation agency. Perhaps this protest wouldn't have happened because a lot of people are clamoring. Why is it this bad that even people cannot afford to eat? And like like many analysts have said, what what is the what is the what is bringing these people together? Hunger. You understand me? So the the it, it wouldn't have happened if government are doing what they are supposed to do. We got to know, we know, we understand that in recent time, our governors have received more al uh, allocation than ever. Yeah. They, they, and yet they, they kept quiet like nothing is happening. You see, if these people have understand how much the governors have been collecting on their behalf, 
because the money any money a governor collect is for the state if it, it is being appropriated well and it is being used well probably by now rather than shouting uh president Tinubu, probably by now people should have been start shouting the name of our governor so, so you think that the frustration is wrongly channeled towards the president whereas it ought to be holding the state governments accountable yes some, something like that some, something like that because because you see maybe nigerians are expecting that uh, from the from the federal location they will be depositing money into individual account as a citizen it will not happen it doesn't happen like that the state governors the ministers are representative of the states and whatever they do has implication on what the federal do the president can only speak through people that work with him the ministers and the governors of the state so why does this information lacuna do you think like in perspective of what the federal government is looking to do through the workings of the law in creating local government autonomy thereby even suing the state governors that message hasn't really been preached to nigerians in a language they won't understand that's exactly what i'm saying you see when that judgment came from the supreme court we expected that government to come out to tell us why do you think that if local government are in place what is the implication on the on the on the on, the, on the nigeria as a whole so that the people at a local area will understand as oh so by the time we have local government now so these are if you many many people do not even understand the place of a local government chairman when you talk of market, when you talk of something, they thought it is President uh, Tinubu that must do all of these things. Let's get by Stalin's opinion as well. Do, do you think that this is largely misinformation or lack of a proper conveyance of policies of government to the Nigerian people who are supposed to benefit from certain judgments, much like your colleague has said? Well, uh, first of all, the truth of the, the, the truth is that there is this um, uh, there is this uh, uh, um, statement in law that you cannot give what you don't have now the government of the day we all know all the things that they build up to the election and after the election and how everything has been moving now nigeria is not that country where you 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 handle it affair like that of affair of a local government nigeria is too big for Some one person to, you, it's a surface that it's too big for you to assume that you can you can do everything by uh, by your own personal means now First of all, when uh, the president gave his speech, I think on Sunday morning or so, he said a whole lot of things, and Nigerians are saying that those that statements are just empty, because to them all those things he, he, he said we are not being felt. First of all, the like my colleague said, the policies of the government are not being communicated, and even if they are communi even if they are to be communicated, I don't I do not think we have the right persons to do that i think part of our problem is that we have wrong persons occupying but wrong yes. positions yes. so many this current cabinet i i i i'm also without fear of favor i don't think the minister of information is understood what it means to be a minister of information and the I, policies of the government are not known let, let, let's also uh, you know take a look at the national orientation agency yes. you know they they play a major role in ensuring that the mind of the government uh, on certain issues is relayed to the populace the right. nigerian populace yes. however if you look at the events leading up to the protest a lot of calls were made by the president either personally or via the Minister of Information, or via any any of you know the people working under him for dialogue, for a roundtable discussion yes. with the protest planners. None of this happened till the protest started, and then when the protest started, calls were made for the president to address the nation. He did. It didn't sit well with the protesters. The protest still skyrocketed until he made another address to the nation via his ex handle. Now my question is, what is the place of the NOA in all of this, in ensuring that the mind of the president, the goodwill of the president, which or the policies of the president is properly communicated to the masses even before it gets to them? National Orientation Agency cannot generate information on its own. The Minister of Information must work with them. They, can, they, can, yeah, they cannot just get up and give information that they are not privy to. 
So they are to communicate based on what the executive has the president, the president, the presidency tells them. They don't manufacture it on their own. So the, the, the it flows from it flows from the inner house down to the outer house. So if they don't get any information, that means they can they cannot give what they don't have. That is that is the point we are trying to establish to the fact that wrong persons are occupying wrong positions. Now, in the first place, this protest wouldn't have uh, uh, issued in the first place. I think the government of the day took the Nigerian youth for granted. They, are, they were thinking, don't worry, it's not that we know how to... Looking at the trajectory of the, of the election, what happens before and after the election. So, the, in, in a local man, we say, uh, we, we, we use the language, see finish. Mm -hmm. The government of the affair that they finish in the youth of Nigeria, so there is nothing they can do. Otherwise, the president had the earliest. In fact, this protest appears to be one of the protests that was that sufficient notice was given enough. The president of the day had enough and sufficient notice to have addressed this even before the protest started. But he kept calm. Day one, day two. I think it was in the, the fourth day that he made the broadcast. That is the medicine after that. Much damage has been done already. One thing we have in Nigeria that we don't learn from from the past. We were trying to see that what happened during the answers is prevented, but then we didn't take the appropriate word measure. The measure of information, wherever he is, is doing a terrible job. <laughs> People who are supposed to be disseminating information, but then one thing we have to know is you may not necessarily, you may not totally transfer the aggression to the means of information because it is very possible that he is not being carried along. Because the one thing, one thing we have known about Nigeria is that. Nigerian government is usually that there is this, this issue the, of cabal. Cabalism. Yes, yeah. cabal is in there. So if they don't carry you along, you will not know. So sometimes you may you may we may, we may be here calling that the means of information. Meanwhile, the young person is saying that I am not among those who are palating the affairs of the thing. Your yes. point is very certain, and many Nigerians, much like our viewers at home, would attest to some of the telltale signs that they raise the alarm of, especially with information. Now the president has an appointed presidential spokesperson in Chief Ajuri Ngelali. Yeah. He also has a special advisor on information and strategy in Mr. Bayo Nanuga. Yeah. But over time, we've seen conflicting statements even when he came to the president's visit to the upper legislative chamber. Now, Mr. B Bayo Nanuga has also come under fire in line with this protest as using some words that also, in the opinion of persons online, yeah. should have been kept behind closed doors. Yeah. In what many consider as some of the embers that stoked the protesters into the streets mm. now the president told nigerians on new year's day that he would have to rejig his cabinet if he sees that those he appointed are not performing do you think that he needs to keep that promise now yes um you see there is nigeria as a state as we are now our hope is that there is much that is expected of all our political appointees. These are not time for mediocrity. These are not time for you to just sleep and collect money and think you can just do anything. Like you have you are like you are you are like you are seen. Just um not not long ago. We had ENSAS protest. Yes, about four years ago. Four years ago. Now we are having this. You see, before this protest, Mr. President was not sleeping. We saw him having meeting with Munak, these, that, APC yeah, yeah, governors, APC governors rest, religious Minister leaders. of FCT, calling yeah. the youth, let's have dialogue, let's have meeting. Before now, it wasn't like that. In fact, when they said there is going to be protest, Nigerian government don't even pay attention. But now, when Nigerian people said there's going to be protest, we saw them, particularly two weeks to that protest, you, you see government officials running up and down to make sure that, you see, Mr. President, as at this point, need to review his cabinet. He does not have a choice. We can command him, but we can advise him that he does not have a choice than to resolve his government. Anyone who cannot perform his duty and responsibility should let go so that people who can represent him 
can who can represent the, the the government of the day will take over the position he needs to keep to that promise. But, but I've seen the APC, his party, taking it very not lightly with persons who had issues to pick with the president. Will the interest of the party supersede that of the Nigerian people? The citizen, the interest of the citizen. The position of the law is that the, the, the well-being and the security of the state is the primary responsibility of government. So, the interest of the party cannot supersede that of the Nigeria as a whole. As you can see, people are now waking up. People, are now, people now understand that, no, we cannot continue like this. Now, Barista Stanley, Nigerians continue to judge where we are as a country in terms of what party was in power over how many years they spent in power and which party is performing better than another party many look at it as the credentials going into 2027 just around the corner forgetting that uh, we keep on using the rhetorics election is over it's time for delivering the dividends of democracy to the nigerian people now whilst keeping the party happy because he came on the shoulders of the party how does he also keep nigerians happy that is the problem we are facing. That is why Nigeria is. That is where we, we, we are still in the same position, and we might not likely move from this to a better position if the same problem continues. Yes, it's of, of a truth. People come to power by by the virtue of of riding on a horse of a political party. But one thing we must understand as a nation is that. Whether you, you are elected under the platform of PDP, Labour Party, APC, the moment you are sworn in, you are, you are now for every other person. And the interest of the entire nation should be, should be paramount, irrespective of the party affiliation. Yeah. Until we leave this issue of party affiliations, making appointment by sentiment, by party, based on party structure, based on religion, based on tribe, we will not go outside, we will not progress. Now, I'm saying this to say that if you take a holistic look of the appointments of the current appointment of Mr. President, you will agree with me that the provision of the federal character are, are not being obeyed. In fact, the president is doing a, the exact thing that the former president Buhari was doing. What, 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 Appoint, in, in, appointing based on political structures and sentiments. In, in, the, past administration, no capacity. in the past administration, yes. uh, the, the president Muhammad Buhari led administration was, you know, riddled by a lot of allegations of nepotism and favoritism towards the northern part of the country. Yes. We thought that the coming of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu would sort of create a level playing ground considering a lot of campaign promises he had made and how even in la in places like lagos where he he lost the elections yeah. but now we are seeing an entirely different picture to as opposed to what was displayed to the nigerian populace from the beginning mr president is not doing anything different from what buhari did in fact he even said it he is it's going to control from where buhari stopped all the appointment of Mr. Current Mr. President are being upsided from one particular region. What Buhari did was well, during his own time, all the appointments were from the, from his own region. Tinibu came over, took over. All his own appointments are from his own what region. Now the issue is not based on region whether you are from region or not. The issue is do this person have the capacity to deliver until we begin to appoint people based on skills, capacity. And capabilities we won't go anywhere. Of, of the truth, the president has the prerogative to appoint anybody he wants. But then you should know that Nigeria is not a family affair where you give people things based on the way your feelings based for on them, your relationship based on your relationship and your feelings for them. That is why we, we, we are where we are currently. And gentlemen, in closing, we have just five minutes in closing. Okay. In closing, Chijo K. Well, well, well uh, let me come to you, uh, Barista Ajala. Now we are establishing that you know successive administrations and governments in Nigeria practice chronic nepotism and favoritism in terms of regionalism and uh, you know party uh, across party lines as well. Let's also talk about the issue of successive governments coming in and abandoning 
uh, major infrastructure projects of previous governments. Uh, there is a caricature captured on the front page of the Guardian newspaper uh, with the caption, White Elephant Projects, as it's been called, Billions in Drains at Southeast Struggles with Abandoned Mega Projects. Now, the caricature here depicts uh, the headline and it uh, says, I need to have my legacy project. Forget the past. New projects are the most profitable. It's one of the major problems we're having in the country, cutting across all regions of the nation. Well, how would you react to this? Well, um, you see, when anybody is coming into office, a serious-minded leader will have a template, a roadmap. And, um, but what should be the intention of any template and roadmap should be that the well-being of the people, you understand? Yes. It's a major problem that um, we need to deal with. But you see, for, for one year and some months that the president has been in the office, high living in Abuja, I have seen some projects that was left behind by past administration that he continued. You see, this is more applicable in some of our states, particularly when the new government is different from the party that just left office. They want to, they want to abandon those legacy. But for, for me, I think government should be continuity. In as much you know that this project, this legacy, this roadmap that my my so my my predecessor yes. left behind will benefit the people. Why abandon it? Why leaving it behind? You understand? You understand what yes. I'm saying? So, government should be continuity. Because when you abandon a project, the finance that has been committed to that project will automatically be a waste. Well, well Barrister, let me just quickly come to you. How do we curb this issue of, you know, this egocentric legacy projects that successive governments tend to take, especially when the coming in uh, a regime is of a, an opposition party or a different party from the uh, uh, previous one? You see, um, it, is, it is stupidity to, to be... Cause to be Making provisions or plans for rail transport, building on building of uh, uh, establishing a, a airport and seaport when the people within you, the people you are leading, are hungry, makes no sense. You leave the primary purpose and you are doing the secondary. You don't count ten without counting one to nine first. Before major projects should be should be should be established, liaise with the people, know exactly what they want, hear from them first. But in Nigeria, they will not do that. Do you know why? They came to the power through the back doors. So nobody can question them. You Look at our electoral law. It is flooded. The, 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 the National Assembly make a particular law. When they, when they go to court, the court gives a different interpretation. And so that they does it. So nobody can question these people because they know how they came into power. And so nobody can hold them accountable. If you are a leader, you want to... It's like a father. If you're a father in the house and you want to do something in the, in the house, you come for a family meeting. Everybody gives your input, gives your view. And yes. then they tell you that we are okay with it, go ahead, or we are not. But in other you don't see that. That is why we keep on having abandoned world projects. And nobody probes those things because all of them are the same. Who do you want to probe? You want to probe the person that came before you? Or who, where will you start from? So we will keep on having white elephant projects because we are not in tune with the people we are what we are leading. So hear from them first, hear their major word, cry, and then know where to start from. And know whether that one you want to do is of economic advantage or benefit to them. Well, thank you, Stanley Madu Abuche Esquire and Barista Rukwe Alayu Ajala for making our time to grace the show this morning. I'm afraid this is as much as time will permit for us to discuss these issues. But some takeaways in terms of points that have been highlighted in the course of our discourse is for a better need assessment of what the people want whilst the government is formulating its policies and strategies. And there's also been calls for Nigerians to channel their frustrations forward properly and account for better governance from their governors other than point their frustrations at President Bola Metinibu. And this episode is available for you to rewatch it on our YouTube channel as well.